Our top story this hour, Mitch McConnell says he has peace with the sunset of his work. The stunning announcement from the Senate floor as the longest serving Senate leader in history says he's stepping down and that it's time for the next generation of leadership. The Kentucky senator turning 82 last week and his decision to step down punctuates a powerful transition underway in the Republican Party right now as lawmakers grapple with this historic moment. So I stand before you today, Mr. President and my colleagues, to say this will be my last term as Republican leader of the Senate. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I'll complete my job. My colleagues have given me until we select a new leader in November and they take the helm next January. Let's bring in our Chief Washington Correspondent, John Carl, along with our Jay O'Brien, who's on Capitol Hill for us, covering uh, the breaking news. And Jay, everything went down fast. Uh, and I know lawmakers have been reacting to this news that surprised everyone as the titan of the Senate announced his, re well, not retirement, but stepping down from this position. He says he's still hanging in there, though, to do some work. What is this going to look like? Yeah, it came as a big surprise, Kira. We heard from Speaker of the House Mike Johnson, for instance, just moments ago in a statement that was released right after he walked by me here and said the statement would be coming out. It says, quote, no member of Congress has played a greater role in reshaping the federal judiciary than Mitch. We've seen reaction rolling in, as you're looking at on your screen, from some of Mitch McConnell's Republican colleagues in the Senate. Susan Collins spoke after McConnell on the Senate floor and said that he had, quote, unparalleled devotion to this institution. In those remarks, were McConnell announced he would not become or not run again to be the Senate Republican leader come November. He said he loved this institution. He talked about his legacy reshaping the federal judiciary and things of that nature. But McConnell said to your question on what's next that he's not leaving the political world. He's going to finish his term as the senior senator from Kentucky. So you can expect him, Kira, to continue to make the case as he's been doing for the last two years of continued aid for Ukraine in its defense against Against Russia. I've heard from sources who say it is Mitch McConnell, even up until that tense White House meeting yesterday, who has been making the strongest case to his fellow Republicans, including the House Speaker, for the need for that aid to continue. So, John, you have followed McConnell for years. He's, he's quite a historical figure on the Hill. He transformed the Supreme Court. He stood up to Donald Trump uh, during his 2020 election denial. I do want to talk about the legacy that he's leaving behind. I want you to personalize that. But I also want to ask you, too, that going up against Trump, did that hurt him? Uh, look, he, he went up against Trump in a way that really no other significant leader in the Congress, Republican leader, did. Uh, you know, he at a time when uh, his counterpart on the House side, Kevin McCarthy, was essentially placating Trump. Uh, McConnell uh, went up against him uh, in many different ways, most importantly with the election. I mean, I will never forget the speech that he gave uh, on, I think it was December 15th of 2020, after uh, all the states had submitted their electoral votes. Uh, and he went out and he recognized uh, that Joe Biden was the legitimate president-elect and that Kamala Harris was the legitimate vice president-elect. He congratulated them quite graciously. And as I uh, later learned, he left the Senate chamber, walked down the hallway uh, to his office, which is just a short ways away from the Senate floor. And when he got there, uh, his staff told him, you have a call from the president of the United States. It was Trump on the line. And I learned that Trump started screaming at him, yelling profanities. How dare you do that? Uh, Trump was obviously still contesting the results uh, and was infuriated about this. Trump hung up on him, and it was the last time the two men ever spoke. Uh, so that gives you a sense of, of, of how he stood up for him. Uh, he managed to continue being a leader throughout the last weeks of the Trump presidency, throughout these last uh, three years of the Biden presidency, uh, but it was clear uh, that that power had slipped away before he made this announcement today that uh, in part, not solely because of, but in part because of his uh, hostility and Trump's hostility towards him, uh, McConnell's power had really waned dramatically. Well, now just to the personal side of things and your numerous encounters with him, what will you remember most about Senator McConnell and his time serving? 
I, I have a specific moment, Kira, that I that I really that is vivid to me. It's a long time ago. Um, the the year was 2002, uh, so we're talking 22 years ago. I was a reporter on Capitol Hill, and there was a big move to oust uh, Trent Lott as the Republican leader. He was embroiled in a, in a bit of a scandal, and McConnell was. Uh, his strongest defender. He was like his right, McCon uh, was Trent Lott's right hand man. He was really defending him. But it was clear uh, that Trent Lott was going to go down. And I remember in the just, just days before um, uh, Trent Lott uh, w stepped down, seeing McConnell, we were alone in a hallway in the Russell Senate office building. I saw him, I walked down the hallway with him as he went to his office talking to him about, you know, where things were standing. He doesn't speak very much. He's very guarded. But I finally asked him, so if Lot does go down, as it looks like he is, are you prepared uh, to run, to, to move up in leadership? And he just looked at me, and normally the, the political answer would be, I'm not going to speculate about that. I'm with the guy. He just looked at me and he said, is today Wednesday? And I looked at my calendar. In fact, it was Wednesday. Uh, and in fact, what happened is Lot was ousted. Uh, Bill Frist became the leader. And the whip, the number two position uh, in the Senate, uh, just, just days later, or maybe it was a couple weeks later, uh, went, to, uh, went to Mitch McConnell. It was that stepping stone that led him uh, to become uh, the, uh, the leader of the Republican Party in the Senate, a position that he has held longer than any other senator uh, in the history of the Republican Party. And you indeed confirmed it was Wednesday. <laughs> yes, I did. It was. I had a moment of doubt. I was like, wait a minute. You know, you know how it is. You know, you get kind of lost. Yes, exactly. Yes, it was, it was um, Wednesday. <laughs> all right. Well, John, you know, I have to ask what kind of impact, you know, do you foresee now Donald Trump having on the next GOP Senate leader? Clearly, we have seen the type of impact he's had on uh, leaders uh, up to this point and now I think it's fair to say, uh, in many ways, uh, Mitch McConnell's decision, but just looking forward now. Well, I, I, I'm not sure it's, uh, it, it's a given that Trump will have a tremendous uh, impact over, over the next Senate leader. The, the choice of that Senate leader is going to be a decision uh, made by the majority of the Republican senators. And, you know, there, there are, there's a good faction of the Republican uh, Senate that is very much pro-Trump, very much MAGA. Uh, but there's also a number of senators who aren't. Uh, not that they stand up to him in, in very aggressively and publicly, uh, but, but that, that is not the strength, uh, his greatest strength. There's going to be a race now. Um, it may be between the, what they call the three Johns. You've got John Barrasso, uh, John Thune, John Cornyn. Um, and and I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if the next leader isn't quite as hostile as, as McConnell sometimes was, but isn't totally Trumpy either. All right. John, Jay, thank you so much. And Jay, keep us updated as you talk to more law lawmakers, uh, please, throughout the day. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.